How's it going guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Scarlet and Violet Wi-Fi battle. Today we're about versus Lazy Boy from the Discord server in the Smogon underused tier. Looking at the team, they got a pretty powerful one. They got the Iron Crown, the Galarian Weezing, the Quackable, Hydreigon, Moltres, and an Ogapon Cornerstone. Pretty powerful stuff. Um, it looks like Gallade could put some work in, and the Choice Scarf's going to come in clutch against the likes of the Hydreigon if they're not Choice Scarfed. Uh, the Quackable with the Psycho Cuts. I think pretty much everything goes down to something that Gallade can do. So I'm hoping Gallade can pop off this game. I'm looking at their team, and I'm thinking they may lead off with their Hydreigon. It might be a Stealth Rocks Hydreigon. Uncommon, but can be used. Um, so I'm leaning towards maybe a Tinkton uh, lead because I don't think they'll lead off with Moltres. So Tinkton could be a good lead. So I'm going to go with Tinkton and then we'll just kind of go from there. I know I always say that we'll just kind of go from there, but I literally am rubbish at team previews and picking my lead. <laughs> and the battle begins. Good luck, have fun, lazy boy. So they lead off with Cobalion.io, the Iron Crown as we lead off with Tonkatin, the Tinkaton. So, we could get Stealth Rocks up right away. Let's see if they're Booster Energy first. It looks like they're not, maybe? They're not. So, that's great. We can knock off their item or we can get Stealth Rocks up. I'm looking at their team and I'm thinking they've got a Defogger and Galarian Weezing, which can't really switch in on a Tinkton. Um, and then they've also got the Quackable, which can. Which could Rapid Spin, but it probably isn't. So, let's go for a Stealth Rock right off the bat. They go for a Volt Switch to break the Air Balloon. Fair enough. They haven't really got any Ground-type Pokemon on their team. That I have to worry about unless their only way of hitting Tinkaton with the Hydreigon is Earth Power, which is unlikely because Fire Blast is a thing. You may as well just run Fire Blast. In comes KFC, which I'm assuming is the Moltres. It is the Moltres. We get the Stealth Rocks up right away. We don't have to worry about no Flame Body. It's good job I didn't go for that knockoff real quick. So, with Moltres on the field, we can easily switch out in something else. Um, I'm leaning towards the Reggie Rock. They could have Scorching Sands, though. So, Rotom is probably a better option. So, I'm thinking I'm going to go Rotom. Um, definitely into Rotom. They may go for a U-turn expecting the Ro Rotom to switch in, or they may go straight for the kill on the Tinkaton. I don't know yet. I'm not a mind reader. So there we go. They go for a U-turn, which is going to do a little bit of chip damage to Rotom Wash. And then it's going to go back to Lazy Boy. In comes Pop Smoke, which is going to be the Galarian Weezing, right? Yeah, the Galarian Weezing comes in, which is fair enough. It's going to get some Stealth Rock chip, which is always well and good. And um, we get some Leftovers Recovery to recover off that U-turn. Always well and good as well. Um, so what are we doing against this Galarian Weezing? They're going to go for a Defog, that much I know. So I should just Volt Switch on it, I think, and then go into something to take it out. I'm leaning towards um, the Tinkaton, once again, for a Gigaton Hammer. Spang. But that kind of baits in the Moltres, which could Flame Body us, so I don't know. So we go for a Volt Switch, which is going to do a decent bit of chip damage to the Galarian Weezing. Can't go wrong with that. Um, what's the Pokemon that's best to go into here, though? I'm leaning towards the Gallade for the Psycho Cut, because that'll hurt pretty much everything on the team, except from the Hydreigon and the Iron Crown. I'm also leaning towards the Tornadus because Bleak Wind Storm hits everything on the team except from the Iron Crown pretty well. And then we can just Heat Wave the Iron Crown if they bring it in. So I think I will go Torn. Torn also doesn't care if it gets burned, which is like, you know, something that's pretty crucial. And um, they go for the Defog though, which is to be expected. They were just in case they went for a Will-O-Wisp because the Glorian Weezing does get Will-O-Wisp. So Stones do disappear, which is unfortunate, but... We now get a free Bleak Wind Storm off on something. So I'm going to go for it and hopefully we hit it. That'd be nice. So they do withdraw Pop Smoke. What are they going to go into? The Iron Crown? That's a good switch if they do. KFC comes in. How well does that take a Bleak Wind Storm? Um, if we can hit it, we do hit it, which is great. Does a nice solid fit third of the HP. And we get the Speed Drop, which is very nice. So that's really good for us. I am going to go for a... Because we can basically stay in here and Bleak Wind Storm again if we want to. We are Assault Vest. I can take any hit from this thing. They probably go for a U-turn. So let's just stay in and go for another Bleak Wind Storm. There we go. We hit the second one, which is great. Getting some serious damage off on that Moltres. And the sooner we get the Moltres out of the way, the better. Because obviously that Flame Body is going to be a pain if they predict the Sacred Sword on the Gallade and they switch it to Moltres and, they, and we get burned. That's going to be bad. That will be very bad for us. McQuax comes in, which is going to be... The Quackwavul. Um, we don't want to stay in against this thing, that's for sure, because it's going to either Ice Spinner or Terror Electric or something along those lines. Um, there's got to be a reason they've brought it in against the Bleak Wind Storm user. So let's go for a U-turn. They probably Terror, I would have to guess. Or the Choice Scarf. I didn't think of that. No, they stay in. They don't Terror. We could have Bleak Wind Stormed. Um, but it's best to be safe, especially when it's like one of your main Pokemon Tornadus, etc. It's, it's, you're better off being safe. So let's go Rotom real quick. Rotom's a good one. We can go for a Will-O-Wisp and stuff. That'd be great. 
Let's see if they go for a Swords Dance, though. They go for an Aqua Step, which is fantastic. So that's going to do some damage, but not too much damage. It gives them a nice speed boost. And we have to hit this Will-O-Wisp, pretty much. Um, if we don't hit the Will-O-Wisp, this thing could potentially sweep through our entire team. Um, because if they... Because no doubt two close combats will take out my Rotom from here. Two will. I don't think one will. So let's go for that Willow. Let's try and get the burn. That would be ideal. They withdraw Mr. Quacks though. They're not trying to get burned. Makes a lot of sense. And they're going to go into KFC once again. Now, what are the chances that this thing is a Terra Grass Power Herb Solar Beam Moltres? I don't think there's a very good chance of that. I think they've just gone into it to absorb the burn and then they're going to go for a U-turn. So I'm just going to go for a Volt Switch real quick. I don't see any reason not to. They go for a Roost though, which is incredibly good for them, considering it makes them lose their flying typing for this turn, which means this Volt Switch doesn't do as much damage. So that's going to take them down to half at least, which is something. And now what I can do is I can go Reggie Rock Stone Edge. Or I can drop a Draco with Cyclers. Are looking at their team, dropping a Draco could be good, other than the Galarian Weezing. Um, and also looking at their team, we could go Reggie Rock. Reggie Rock's not a bad one. It's not the greatest one either, to be fair. Um, I think I'm going to go with the Cyclers R switch. I think Cyclers R is a good one because if they um, go into the Galarian Weezing, for example, to take the Draco Meteor, we can then overheat on them the next turn. And, get, and like potentially take out the Galarian Weezing. So let's go for that Draco real quick. And um, they do stay in though. How well are they taking this? <gasps> they lived as if they lived and roosted. That's a specially defensive Gl uh, Moltres. That's definitely specially defensive. So um, now we've got a U-turn. So I'm going to U-turn real quick um, just to get out of there. They're probably going to roost again if I had to guess. Um, no Flame Body, which is nice. No Flame Body on the, the Cyclers are, so that's great. Now I'm going to have to make a choice. I think I'm going to go into my Reggie Rock. I think Reggie Rock is a good choice. Un Un Un's going to come in. There we go. They do go for a Roost again as expected. So we can probably expect to see a U-turn here. Because they've got Roost, U-turn, and they probably have two stab moves, right? So do I go for a Stone Edge or do I go... I think we go for a Stone Edge because it's still going to hurt the Quackable, right? So they withdraw the Moltres. Are they going to go Quackable? Pop Smoke comes in. Oh, let's see how much damage this does if we can hit it. He's Choice Banded after all. It might actually KO the Galarian Weezing. We hit. We nearly take them out. Oh, nice. Right, so they're probably going to go for a Pain Split. So we need to go into our lowest HP Pokemon. Or they might go for a Willow. So I think Rotom's the way to go here. Just because I feel like they will go for a Willow. Pain Split could also come. But if they go for Pain Split on the Rotom Wash, it's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. And they go for the Willow. So the Willow on the Rotom is not a big deal. Definitely not a big deal. We outspeed the Galarian uh, Weezing with Rotom. And we get a free Volt Switch off pretty much. So I I'm actually leaning towards just going for a Hex. Just to take it out. I don't think I need to Volt Switch particularly. Although that does give them a free Switch into their Ogre Pond if we do Hex them. Um, so I might just go I might just go Volt Switch and then into Cyclozar. Cyclozar can do pretty well here. So let's go Volt Switch into Cyclozar. They do stay in and let the Weezing go down. So we get the first KO of the game, which is fantastic. After, what, 10 minutes? <laughs> we finally get a KO. It looks like it's going to be one of those games. It's going to be one of those games, unfortunately. Well, not unfortunately. It's best that way, I think. So let's go into Torn, actually, because Torn outspeeds everything on their team. And we can just U-turn. So I bring Torn in. They probably go Moltres here, if I had to guess. And then they uh, Roost, maybe? Or they attack. One of the two. They go into Green Bean, which is going to be the Ogre Pond, right? Yeah, Ogre Pond comes in. So I'm pretty confident we outspeed. Let me just double check my speed tiers. So we definitely outspeed. So that's great. So I'm going to go for a U-turn right now. They do withdraw. So they're going to make a double. I'm assuming they thought they were baiting us out. Um, Tornadus is normally not run max speed, to be fair. So they actually go into that Moltres as we go for a U-turn, which is going to do no damage to the Moltres. But it was a crit. <laughs> and the flame body. <laughs> crit and the, all the hacks. All the hacks that could have happened there happened. So we get the U-turn off. We get a free switch in with whatever we want against this Moltres. I'm leaning towards the Regirock. Regirock's putting a lot of pressure on this team. So let's go into Regirock. Why not? Let's go into un, un, un real quick, like so. And then we'll just go straight for a Stone Edge. There's no reason not to go for a Stone Edge. It'll hurt the Quackable. They go for the U-turn. Luckily, Flame Body doesn't work like Poison Touch. So even though the Moltres made contact with me, it can't burn me like that. So, like, I, 
Someone once said that to me, like they thought flame body meant that like if you if, if contact was made in any form, then it would burn them. I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> okay, in comes Cerberus. What's Cerberus then? That's the Hydreigon. How well do you take a Stone Edge? We missed the Stone Edge, which is really unfortunate for us. Um, so we're going to have to switch out here. Uh, what do we go into, though? I'm leaning towards the Rotom or the Tinkaton. I'm going to go Tinkaton. I think that's a good, respectable play. We don't know what this Hydreigon's going to do. They may go for a Fire Blast predicting the Tinkaton to come in, but I feel like they drop a Draco straight away. So let's see what they do here. We're going to break that mold. And they do go for an Earth Power, which is going to sting quite a bit. But now that we know that they are more than likely locked into that, we can now switch out. So I'm leaning towards the Rotom. I think Rotom's the better one. I like how both our like, Pokemon with special defense bulk are burned. Both of our U-turn and Bolt Switch Pokemon are burned. <laughs> Anyway, Rotom comes in. Now, that can take an Earth Power, no problem, which is great. So, we're going to levitate above that Earth Power real quick. And then they kind of have to switch out here. So, I'm going to go for a Volt Switch straight away. Um, because I'm pretty confident they'll be choice. Because they're normally choice, these Hydreigons. They are normally choice, I will say. So, uh, this next turn, we'll go straight for a Volt Switch like so. And we'll see what they're going to do. They do withdraw Cerberus, which is great. So let's see what Volt Switch can do here. As uh, they go into Cobalion to IO, which is fantastic. That's that's great for us, because we can now uh, go into anything we want to take on this um, Iron Crown. So we get a nice Volt Switch off, good damage, which is great. Um, and now we'll go into our... I'm, I'm leaning towards the Reggie Rock, but at the same time I'm not. I'm leaning also towards the Cyclozar for the Overheat or the Tornadus. I think I'm going to go Tornadus. Tornadus works pretty well here. So we'll go Tornadus, go for a Heat Wave. That could be pretty clutch. We are burned, unfortunately, so we get some burn damage, but it's fine. We got that regenerator. It's no problem. Let's go straight for a heat wave. They may attack us. So they're going to terrestrialize their iron crown, which is really good to know. What type are they going to terrestrialize into, though? They're going to go into a pure fairy type, which is fair enough. We go for a heat wave now. It still should do some decent damage, and they have no reliable recovery. So let's go for the heat wave first and foremost, like so. No damage. We get the burn, which is clutch. They're not physical, though, so it doesn't really matter. And then they go for a Psy Shock, which is going to hit us on our physical side, bypassing the Assault Vest. And that is Choice Specs, if I've ever seen it. That is definitely Choice Specs. So what do we do here? Do we preserve our Tornadus by going for a U-turn here, or do we switch out? Because if we if we switch out, we're going to get the re Regenerator. Um, so what do we do? Uh, if they're going to go for a Psy Shock, we should do... I haven't really got best, the best switch in here. That's choice specs, though. But I think it two shots the offensive Reggie Rock. So I'm going to go for a Bleak Wind Storm and try it. They do withdraw because they don't want to risk the Bleak Wind Storm, which is fair enough. And they're going to go into KFC the Moltres, which is great. So we're going to get some nice chip damage on this thing. If we can hit it, we do hit it. And we get a free switch in on the Moltres because, A, the speed's drop. That's great. The burn's going to take us out, which means we get some momentum here. So Tornadus does go down, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. Uh, let's see how this plays out for us. So I'm leaning towards the Rotom. I'm leaning towards the Regirock. Regirock could be clutch. Could be really clutch. Um, so I am going to go Regirock, to be honest with you. I think Regirock is a good shout. So we'll go Regirock like so. And then we'll go straight for a Stone Edge. Yeah, we go straight for a Stone Edge here, because if they go Quackable, it should two-shot. They go for a Roost. Little do they know, if we connect this Stone Edge, this should KO the Moltres regardless. There we go. Down it goes, because we are a choice banded Regirock. They didn't stand a chance. They really thought we were defensive Regirock or something along those lines. But Cerberus comes in. The Hydreigon. Now, do I Terra here? Because here's the thing, looking at their team, Gallade puts the work in if this thing's out of the way. Yeah, I'm going to Terra. I'm going to Terra Water so we're not weak to that Earth Power. I think that is the way to go here. That is the way. So we're going to Terrastalize real quick like so. Regirock's turned into a Water type. It's not afraid of no Earth Powers. Let's see how well it takes said Earth Power. If they're not Choice Specs, I think the, I think the Iron Crown's Choice Specs. So I don't think this thing will be. They go for a Dark Pulse though. If they flinch, that's going to be Clutch. Stone Edge comes through once again. Oh, nearly gets the KO. Let's go for another one. They go for another Dark Pulse. Is it going to take us out? Not quite. Reggie Rock comes through. No, misses the Stone Edge. That is unfortunate. That is unfortunate, but it happens. It happens. So what do we do here? Let's go for another Stone Edge. 
And um, they go for another Dark Pulse. That's going to take us out. So Reggie Rock did really well there. Took out the Moltres, which is great. Nearly took out the Weezing. Basically got it to 1 HP. Will severely weaken the Cerberus. And now looking at the team that they've got, I think we can probably go into whatever we want in here. So I'm going to go Cyclizar first and foremost. And we're just going to U-turn. Or Rapid Spin. Rapid Spin could be clutch as well. We've got the pressure on, though. Let's go for the Rapid Spin, because that's all we need to take out this uh, Hydreigon. If, if they can switch up moves to go Draco Meteor, then they will not. They'll switch out. So they withdraw, because they're probably choice locked. And they don't want it to go down. They're going to go into Kabalion.io, which is fantastic. Down. This thing is going to get some Rapid Spin damage. And... It's going to get some burn damage as well, which is great. So the burn damage is going to rack up, takes it down to red. We can freely go for an overheat now. Watch us miss. Watch us just miss right now. We don't miss, which is fantastic. Cyclizar gets a KO on the Cobalion. I keep saying Cobalion, that nickname's throwing me off. <laughs> the Iron Crown. Now they can go into Quackable, though. Quackable could pull this back. Do not underestimate the Quack. Definitely don't underestimate the Quack right now. That is not what you should be doing, underestimating the crack. Uh, they go for the green beam, which is going to be the Ogre Palm, which is fair enough. We now simply go for a U-turn, and we've got two minutes left in this battle. Let's see if we can wrap this up. Let's see if we can wrap this up. So we go for that U-turn. Nice clean damage. Break that sturdy. Then we just sack off Tinkerton, and we just go into Gallade and start Sacred Sorting. That's all we need to do. We sack off Tinkerton here. So there we go. Tonkatin comes in. Like so. Big hammer. Big hammer. Can't see the Ogre Pond anymore. They go for an Ivy Cudgel, which is definitely going to take out Tonkatin. Definitely takes us out, which is fine. Tinkerton going down is all part of the plan. It's part of the plan right now. Okay? So now we go Gallade, and Gallade should clean up here. I mean, Quackable's got some damage. Not too much damage, though. Some damage. So let's go for a Sacred Sword, because there's no reason not to. If they, if they hard switch Quackable right now, this will 2 it KO it, and then we'll just proceed to sweep from there. Sacred Soul comes through. Down goes the Ogre Pond. Thanks to Choice Scarf Gallade. Absolutely amazing stuff. Gallade just hit the field. I think Regirog deserves the spot on the thumbnail for this video because it did really well. Like, th th that set was really good. So Cerberus comes in. Let's see if Cerberus can actually outspeed us with its Choice Scarf. I think it does outspeed, but can it take us out of a Draco? Who knows? Let's find out. They go for a Draco Meteor. That's going to definitely do a lot of damage, but not enough to take us out, which is fantastic. As Sacred Sword's going to come through. And take out the Hydreigon, which is fantastic. So with Hydreigon out of the way, we are good to go right now. That Quackable coming in is going to be pretty threatening, to be honest with you. But um, McQuax comes in. Let's see how much damage it does to McQuax. Let's quickly pick our move. There we go, Sacred Sword. Let's do this. Sacred Sword comes through. Can we get a good damage? Gallade! Gallade! Was that a crit? That wasn't even a crit! That just one-shot Quackle. That's awesome! Yes! What a win with, like, literally zero seconds left. GG, Tyler Lazy Boy. That was really good. I love that one. But anyway, here is the team. Try it out if you want to use the code at the top right corner of the screen. Really enjoyed this battle. I hope you did as well. If you did, of course, leave a like, subscribe, all that wonderful stuff. And with that being said, I'll see you all in a bit. By the way, Galade's definitely going in the thumbnail now after that.